how are you doing? My name is Jenny Medina and today we're going to see our lecture number 15 that is called Trying God and the Bible. I'm so happy to be here sharing the gospel of the Bible with you, but you already know that before to start with our lecture, we need to pray. So if you want to join me, let's close our eyes. So let's pray. And Heavenly Father, we want to thank you in this time because now you allow us to see the lecture number 15. Thank you because it is only by your by the power of your Holy Spirit that you has allowed us to be here learning more and more about you and about your son that Jesus is the Christ. And please open our minds, open our hearts so we can understand that you are the only one who fulfilled my fundamental problem. We pray in the name of Jesus whom is the Christ. Amen. Okay guys, so in this lecture we are going to see four points. In the first one, we are going to see God the Father. In the second one, we are going to see God the Son, that it is Jesus who is the Christ. In the third point, we are going to see God who is the Holy Spirit. And as the last point, that it is the fourth, the number fourth, we are going to see the Bible, right? So in order to start, we are going to see the point number one. What is the function or what is like the role that God Father plays? In, in this right in this lecture right so as a beginning i would like to read in genesis chapter one in the verse number one and the bible said this it is a really a short uh, verse and the bible said this in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth so in this verse we can see how god he is the creator of everything the bible said in the verse that we just read says that god created all the heavens and all the earth so another verse that I would like to read, it is in the book of Psalms, in the chapter 146, in the chapter uh, 10, 9 to 10, and the Bible said this, The Lord protects the foreign among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but the fraud is that place of the weak. And in the verse 10 it says, The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. So we can see that God, he is the creator of everything. And now we can see in this verse that he is the one who protects us. And he is the one who will reign forever. So that, 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 what does this mean? That he is the only one who will reign forever and that he is our king. And as a last uh, verse that I would like to read in this chapter 4 in the verse 11. And Revelation chapter, chapter 4 in the verse 11, the Bible said this. You are worthy, O oh Lord, our God to receive glory and honor and power for you create all the things and they exist because you create what you please so in this verse we can confirm what we were reading in genesis that he is the only one who created everything he is the creator and he is the only one who deserves to give him glory and honor and he is the one who has power as we said he is the only one who is the king and this is this is the point that described God the Father. And as a second point, now we are going to to see God the Son, that it is Jesus who is the Christ. And we are going to read from the verse 15. And the Bible says this: Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. We already saw that God the Father He plays some role, right? So Christ now He is the invisible He is the visible image of the invisible God. And let us read. He exists before anything was created, and he is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. He made the things we can see and the things we cannot see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. So everything that God the Father created, it was for him and to him, right? For him, for Jesus who is the Christ, because we just read that he is over all the creation. And it says in the verse 17, he existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. And in the verse 18, it says, Christ, it is also the head of the church, uh, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who raised from the dead. So he is first in everything, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And I think that this a uh, really very important verse because it is really deep because it says, for God in all his fullness, he pleased to live in Christ. So God the Father, he created everything and he gave the authority to Christ. And He, the Bible said that he is the only one, he is the... the the supreme over all the creation, uh, right? Because God was pleased to live in Christ. So this is son, the, uh, this is God, 
the Son of God, and we know that the Son of God is Jesus, whom, whom is the Christ. And another verse that I would like to read is in, and it is in the book of Acts, in the chapter 4, in the verse 12, and the Bible said this about the Son. And it says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must save. And we already know uh, that that name it is in his son, that it is Jesus who is the Christ. So now it is uh, the time to see the point number three, that it is going to be God, but in the Holy Spirit. And let us read in the point number three. This three point is about the Holy Spirit. And now that I believe in the, in the Father, that I believe in the Son, I have to believe that now that I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that I believe the gospel, the good news of God, now that I believe this, the Holy Spirit of God, it is with me. And we are going to confirm this through the Bible in the book of Romans, in the chapter 8, and in the verse number 9. And the Bible says this, But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if the if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. So now that I believe this, the Holy Spirit of God is with me, and now I belong to Jesus. I belong to God because we, uh, if we remember God, He is the, the Creator. He created everything, the heavens and the earth, and He gave all the authority to His Son. Uh, to his son and his son is Jesus who is the Christ and I have to believe that uh, his son it is the Christ and for our, in order to have salvation and now when I believe this the Holy Spirit lives in me and I can be with him and now we are going to read in the book of Acts in the chapter uh, number one in the verse eight remember that if you have your Bible you can read the, uh, the verse uh, as well and in the verse chapter in the chapter one in the verse eight the Bible said this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So uh, the Holy Spirit it was given to me for this to in order to me to be a witness of God. And when he gave me the power to testify about the gospel, about this good news. And now we are going to see the point number four. And the point number four, it is called the Bible, right? So today we already know that the Bible only talks about one thing. The Bible, it was written for us to believe that Jesus is the Christ, right? But now we are going to read in the, in the second letter of Timothy, in the chapter number three, and we are going to read from the verse 14 to 17. And the Bible said this, But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, but you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation. So when we believe what the Scriptures talks about, that is Jesus, we have the salvation. And the Bible said this in the verse 8. In the verse 16, it says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to come and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So according to the Bible, it is telling us that God used the Bible to help us and to believe in his son because this is the only way for us to have salvation. So this was our lecture that it was about uh, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now the Bible, all the Bible talks about only this, that Jesus is the Christ. And we already know and we already believe what is Jesus is the Christ. Because if we can remember, he is the true prophet, he is the true king, and the true high priest. The true king who defeated my enemy. The true high priest who gave his life for me to have forgiveness of my sin. And the true prophet who opened up a new way so I can meet with my creator, right? So I can meet with God the Father. So this was the lecture of today, and I'll see you the next uh, week with the, number, with the lecture number 16.